All these guys. I know they are pretty. All these guys are going to freezer camp tomorrow. These are the roosters that we bought. Let's see, we ordered these from Meyer Hatchery back in, I think we got them mid March. And, uh, these are the main ones. They're like their dad. Yeah, some of these are kings. These black Australorps are not nice. This, you want to know why there's a big dent here? This big one right here flogged me yesterday and I fell over the wire. <laughs> Where's the three feathers? You know feathers? the movie Rango? Yeah. You know when Rango's walking by the bar and the chicken flies out and he's like, get back in there and assert your authority. And he goes back in there and he starts fighting. That's what that rooster just went on there. Falling out and walking. I just realized she's <laughs> That chicken All these guys over here, down. they are going to go to freezer camp tomorrow as well. <laughs> we got a big day planned tomorrow. Hey, welcome back to Two Old Crows Homestead. Um, Randy and Shelly here. Randy's behind the camera. We've also got um, Samantha, Josh, um, Jessica is up at the house getting me some ice water. And um, so we're getting everything ready. We're out here getting everything ready for a big day. We're doing chicken processing today. And we are, um, what did you count? 53? 43. 43. If I counted right. Yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds better. Um, we got 43 roosters that we're harvesting today. And um, so we're going to do it two different ways. If you all are, um, can you turn that off for a minute? Just for a minute. If you all are um, uh, wanting to learn how to process chickens, Jason from Sow the Land has, he does chicken processing classes, him and his wife. And um, so you can go to their place in North Carolina. You can actually sign up and go and do the class and learn how to do it hands-on. And they also have, um, this is what we did, they also have a chicken processing online course. When you purchase the course, you get all of uh, a comprehensive set of videos that tell you step-by-step. Step. There's a video about all the stuff you need to get ready. There's a, step, there's a video about the stuff you need to do the day before. There's a video about um, actually, you know, processing them, eviscerating them, um, packing them up, everything. And, there, and then not only that, it comes with a um, PDF document or something like that that has all of the instructions that you can write out. And it also, I mean, look at these pictures. This is pretty awesome. Um, it also has um, a bunch of recipes for just, you know, chicken recipes. So um, it shows you how to make a stand for a kill cone and all of that stuff. Um, so we're using that method for part of the chickens today. Um, the other part of the chickens, I think we're going to, you said you wanted six. No, we want six and you want five, six. So um, uh, 12 of the chickens we're gonna process as whole chickens using this, you know, how they instruct to do it in here. The rest of the chickens, we are, um, we're gonna use, and, and so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna name this, um, just because Billy hasn't really made a name for it. I'm gonna call it the strong bond method. Because we're parting out the barnyard pimps. Yeah, really. Um, I'm gonna call it the strong bond method just because Billy and Darren are the ones that came up with um, this method to piece out chickens. I'm super excited about this because I didn't want to have a bunch of whole fryers in my fridge or in my freezer and I didn't know a quick way to do it. So I'm going to link that video down below of Billy instructing how to do this and um, we're going to do all of the rest of the chickens that way. So anyway, come along with us today. Yeah, um, and that link will be here, 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 here. Or here, just remember, keep your arms in the vehicle at all times. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> okay, so um, anyways, come along with us as we do this today. Um, I'll try to capture as much of today as I can, but we're trying to get all of these birds processed. So, yeah. And this is also going to be part of the um, Every Bit Counts Challenge because we're going to be putting up some chicken today. So, see you in a little bit. Okay, so right here we've got, um, we're filling up one of our coolers with ice and water and vinegar. And this is going to be like our vinegar wash that 
As soon as they come out of the plucker, they'll go into that to kind of rinse off. They'll sit there for about a minute. And then they'll come over here to, I've got two tables set up for eviscerating or parting out. Um, they've been cleaned off with vinegar water and all that kind of stuff. We've got some buckets down there to catch all the parts. Um, over here, I actually, um, I know this looks weird, but I have these tubs that, um, you know, kind of like what, you know, our mammies or whatever used to use to, to break green beans and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure what they're called. They're just those ceramic coated ones. Um, so I have four of those sitting here. And when we start parting the bird or piecing the birds out, we're going to put the parts in that so we can take them in and put them in, um, what is that thing called that we do? The food saver. We're going to take them in and put them in the food saver. Okay, so we have our turkey fryer here. And this is, I'm not doing these steps in order. I probably should be doing them in order. But um, you get the, you heat the water up in the turkey fryer to about 150 degrees. And it loosens up their feathers. If you add a little bit of this, just a little bit. If you add a little bit of that, if you add a little bit of Dawn, it helps to um, get the oils and stuff off of their feathers. And it's not going to gum up your turkey fryer. Um, uh, it's not going to gum up your plucker as bad. So that's why we add the dish soap. So right here we have our kill cone hung up. Um, there's a bucket down below that uh, will catch, you know, all the blood and stuff like that. And then out here we have our chicken plucker. Once the chicken is... Um, we cut its throat in the, in the kill cone. And then um, we will put it into the hot water that's in the turkey deep fryer. Um, and then we'll bring it out here, put it in here for a couple minutes. Um, you turn a hose on and, you know, knock it around and it does a great job of taking, it does a great job of taking all of the feathers off. And then we take it inside and put it in the vinegar bath. And then we cut it up however we're going to do that. So do you have to put on? So we have about a dozen chickens in here that we have eviscerated. And they're supposed to stay in this and sit for about 24 hours. So Jessica is cutting the um, skin along the inner thighs and then she's going to pop those um, joints, joints yeah, out, of, out of socket. Oh, it's still warm. And you can see it, lays it, it just open. popped up. That right, that right there is the ball joint or whatever in its, in its hip. And it just pops that out and lays it flat and then she's gonna cut the breast off. I haven't really gotten great at this and with these being dual purpose birds, it's hard to get a lot of breast meat. Watch out cutting into that. So you gotta be careful cutting in, cutting the breast out. You don't wanna go into that membrane because that's where you know like all of the insides are at. So you wanna stay on this side of that. And watch out for the crop. Yeah, this is the crop. So using this method, you're not going to take any of the organ meat out or anything. Which is annoying. Which is a lot easier. But, I mean, if you want whole fryers to put in your freezer, you're going to have to do that. And we did do that with those dozen that are in the cooler right now. But for this, we're cutting the breast off, we're cutting the wings off, and we're cutting the leg quarters off. And we're piecing all of those out. I'm going to stick them in the freezer. See, I got the crop. Up, yep. But you ain't gotta worry about it. You can save the feet to do um, broth and all that kind of stuff. And we actually have a pot going in the house right now that has some feet in it. But um, yeah. we're done with that. So the rest of it's just going to the pigs. Now she's going to take off the wing. 
It's easier to start at the bottom. Yeah. And you really just kind of get in there and cut the cartilage and the wings come off pretty easily. The hard part is the skin. Well, and I think we need to sharpen our knives really good because we've Dad been using them all them. day. Like he sharpened no, them he just used that thing. It's not really sharpening them. We'll take all the feathers off. So we have taken, check it out, the chicken feet right there, there's a neck in there, we put some onions and peppers in there, and made chicken stock, and um, Jessica is putting that up, or screwing the lids on, getting ready to stick that in the pressure canner, and um, we're going to have chicken stock. The quarters. Did you hear me? All right. So this is all the meat from our 46 chickens. Actually, it's not all of it. We have 12 whole chickens out in the cooler outside that we will bag up tomorrow because they need to rest for 24 hours. But this is 46 chickens. So, yeah, I'll give you a pound total tomorrow that we put up from those 46 birds. Hey, meet Lucky. He um, escaped the mass execution yesterday. <laughs> um because he kept flying into our pig run, our pig pen, and he, um, because the other chickens kept attacking him, the other roosters, and we just were not in the mood to chase him down in the pig run yesterday. So when I got up this morning, he is back in the turkey coop place where all of our meat birds were at, and he is loving life. And he has been pardoned until the next processing day all right so to finish up our chicken butchering weekend um we're gonna take these have set for 24 hours and we're gonna take these out put them in those bags over there and then put them in this to shrink wrap them and then we'll stick them in the freezer so after they've rested for 24 hours we're going to pull them out of the cooler that you have them in. We're going to pat them dry because you don't want a lot of extra moisture in there. And uh, if you have any like random feathers that you didn't get or anything that needs to be cleaned off, you can do that now. Make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. Get a bag. So the way these bags work, um, it comes with a straw that you stick down inside the bag when you put it in your um, turkey deep fryer when it gets heated up. So for right now, because we haven't got to that part, I am just putting the zip tie loosely around this so we can stick the straw down in there. And, um, and then we'll tighten it up as we're doing that. Mainly because I don't want, um, we are out in the barn and there are a few flies buzzing around and I don't want them getting in my chicken. So I'm closing them up and um, yeah. So you just take the straw, stick it down inside the cavity of the bird like this. Bring it over here. And you're gonna, the temperature needs to be between 180 and 200 degrees. So you're gonna stick it down in here for five to 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Get all that out of there. I'll pull this out and secure this shrink wrap bird. It's wild how it just pushes all the air out. I'm now, not counting. Now start counting. Huh? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get this out. Yeah, you can see how loose these bags are here. Compared to the shrink wrap ones. Okay, so we have our dozen whole fryers bagged up. Um, and I'm just gonna tell you the numbers real quick and then we're gonna talk about it. I have seven three pound birds. I have four three and a half pound birds and two four pound birds for a total of, what is that, 43 pounds. And then um, yesterday we put up or we packaged up the ones that we pieced out um, 56 pounds, is that what I said? So we have a grand total of 99 pounds of meat that went into the freezer. Now, that didn't all go into our freezer because um, uh, two of our daughters went in with us on purchasing all these birds and, and you know, feeding them, taking care of them and all that stuff, and they came and helped to process them yesterday. So um, they have part of them and uh, Actually, it kind of equals out to they got like a third, we got a third, and they got a third. So, each one of them got a third. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah. Okay, so what did we say? We came up with 99 pounds of meat in the freezer? Yeah. Um, was it worth it? Yes and no. We bought these birds in uh, mid, we got them in mid-March, like 50 of them, I think. And then we had um, 14 of ours that we hatched out. Um, we lost some. We, we actually ended up with five hens, is that right? Yeah. And we kept one of the hens for us and gave four of the hens to a friend um, to get his flock going. And um, so that took us down to 47 because we have Lucky out here who escaped being processed yesterday because um, he hangs out with the pigs. So, yeah, I got a little video of him earlier. I'm going to put in here. Um, so was it worth it? Um, we fed our chickens with feed. The, the meat birds that were out here. And crack corn. And crack corn. And that was getting expensive at the end because they were full grown or big and eating a lot of food. Um, however, uh, you know, Randy says it's it's cheaper to go to the store and buy them. But the ones that you get at the store. Are pumped and injected with steroids and growth hormones. And yep. And, um... Causing all, I think, I, honestly, me personally, I think it's causing all kinds of havoc on our children. The growth hormones and everything that they put in I mean, the chicken. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like big breasts, but on these chickens, they were small. <laughs> and so, thick thighs. Anyway, um, I think, and so when we bought these birds, we went with the, um, the package of roosters that they had at... Uh, Meyer Hatchery and they were a little bit less expensive um, they're dual purpose birds and they weren't the big red broilers or the what are the other ones Cornish. called Cornish cross hens that you know like get absolutely huge in a very quick period of time so we um, we bought them mid March and processed them today and did to be honest with you we got really good size legs and thighs and leg quarters and things like that didn't get very big breasts at all so um 
I was a little disappointed in that, but I, I was kind of anticipating that because these are dual purpose birds. I think going forward, we're probably not going to purchase any more birds from hatcheries. We're just going to hatch them out ourselves because we've gotten actually pretty good at that. And um, right now we've got, what, 10 chicks up there in the brooder? Nine, nine, nine or 10 that we just, we hatched out recently and I'm getting ready to put some more in the brooder. And um, so whatever hens we get, we'll continue to add to our laying flock until we feel like we have enough. And um, we'll probably grow hens out and, and sell them because people, um, a lot of people don't want to mess with chicks, but they want chickens, you know, laying chickens. So we might venture into that. And then the roosters that we get, we will um, put those in the freezer. And, you know, just with the knowledge that they're just not gonna be big breasted birds because they're dual purpose birds. So that's okay because we know what our chickens are being fed and we know um, they where are, they're at. Like injected with. And we know that they're not like in a chicken barn or whatever they call those places where they don't even see the light of day. I mean, our chickens have a pretty bougie life. All right, Lucky? So anyway, that's where we're at. And um, oh, if, we, you, if you have pigs, they love them, love them bones. Oh yeah. So like all the carcasses that we had left yesterday after doing the, the processing technique that um, Billy from Permapasture Farm, him and um, uh, Darren from Hacks for the Homesteader, they came up with this processing um, technique that I am calling the strong bond processing technique. <laughs> but, um, so we pieced a lot of our birds out. We only did, um, you know, the whole fryer thing for a dozen of them. And uh, we, so we had a bunch of carcasses left over and our pigs went crazy. Like they love them. So yeah. Anyways, um, comment below if you have any other tips or any comments about processing chickens? Um, well, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to our channel recently. We've had an influx of subscribers, and that's pretty awesome. So thank you for that. Um, hit the like button below, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, God bless you. Have a great day.